Dear sirs, madams, being a Norwegian myself, I can give you what other Norwegian candidates have to offer, and a whole lot more. First and foremost among these things, a whole new vision for the alliance for the 21st century, one that actually deals with threats to our common security, and not some phantom enemy or fictional dragon to scare and impress the audience. First, however, let's focus on the positive side of things. As an alliance, we've come a long way to being an omnipotent and omnipresent force that is both well-coordinated and well-prepared to carry out almost any task. We have military bases in almost a hundred nations throughout the world, complete with correctional and interrogation facilities and special operations training camps. We have strategic alliances with everything from Nazi thugs to Islamist and Zionist extremists. Plus we have an almost totalitarian control of mainstream and even most alternative media in the West. This is an extremely powerful upper hand for the tasks that lie before us. The really big question is, of course, whether we are a force for good, or, perhaps, rather, for bad, and do we really have the right vision for the future? Are we, to be a bit plump? Absolutely certain that state-sponsored education and health services, and public referendums for secession, are the enemy. In an age of advanced nuclear weapons and delivery systems for these, we should, according to many analysts, be more sure that these citizens, walking peacefully to their primary schools and voting booths to decide their own future, actually are the real enemy and the real threat overhanging humanity and the free and open society. I won't beat about the bush anymore. We are today, as an alliance, tremendously and almost hopelessly off course. We've outdone the Soviet Union in terms of sheer totalitarian media control, terror attacks and threats against our own populations, torture, black sites and knackwound naval-style renditions to our menagulids, scattered around the planet. In fact, some of the very torture camps we use today were even inherited from the Soviets or the Nazis of the past century. So, the alliance of today is the new Axis, or the new SSSR, or perhaps both. Our alliance has mowed down innocent civilian shoppers at supermarkets in Belgium with machine guns. Killing people with machine guns at supermarkets. Even my mom supports this. Although, she's never been shot, of course, while shopping. NATO has also blown up beer festivals in Bulgaria and train stations in Italy with bombs in order to blame it on the left, and mostly gotten away with it, thanks to our death grip of the Western print and electronic media. The grip has steadfastly tightened, no small effort on our part, through the decades, to the extreme freedom-choking grip of today, where even an attack killing 3,000 innocent office workers and passengers, our own citizens, is kept totally under wraps by our media, and is not at all investigated by any muckraking journalists or editors. Our alliance is, however, a learning organization. Having learned the lesson from the Big Apple about non-investigation of domestic terror attacks, Tony Blair's Britain approved the new 2005 Inquiries Act on the 7th of April, made it valid from the 7th of June, in time for the London bombing a month later, on the 7th of July, blamed on four British Muslims. Same thing in Norway in 2011. Mr. Stoltenberg, then Labour PM, decided that the charter for the 22nd of July inquest should include sentences about how it should not look for guilty parties or accomplices, and also sentences about the one responsible person, that is Breivik, even before the commission started its work. So, in other words, I can see why my rival for the position as Secretary General is a popular man in some circles. Irony aside, the days of the choking grip on free speech and dissenting voices are numbered, even within our most powerful alliance. New platforms and media hubs independent of our totalitarian tactics are popping up like mushrooms as we speak. The tide of dissent cannot be held back, therefore our best option is to come clean about what our great alliance has done, and give excuses and financial compensation to the surviving victims within our alliance as well as to the families and left behind, after the thousands who've been killed at the hands of the special operatives of our omnipresent alliance. Others within our alliance must be brought to justice for the cold-blooded genocide against more than three million Muslims. Compensations must be paid, excuses must be given, to millions upon millions of lovers, sisters and brothers, moms and dads. Ahead of us now lies a hundred years of extreme and almost unthinkable changes to our global climate, 
Forests will burn, and oceans will warm. Whatever the infiltrated panel on climate change says, in its deceptively comforting reports. Somewhere within these hundred years, the entire tiger will burn. The vast forest from Siberia to Scandinavia, and from Newfoundland to Alaska, will go up in smoke, and this smoke will contribute further to the warming and to the collapse of even more ecosystems on our planet, that is if our powerful alliance does nothing. We must therefore prepare for a boreal wildfire brigade of immense proportions. Unheard of numbers of troops must be deployed 24-7 during key months and extreme bushfire threats. Same goes, of course, for the Amazon and the other major rainforest areas. In Antarctica, giant walls must be erected by engineer squads from our alliance, in order to stop the glaciers draining the West Antarctic ice sheet, a process that will otherwise drown most major cities throughout the world, and tilt the Earth's axis. And finally, we must work together with the Inuits and the Russians on biological, chemical, physical and other research and development that can help stabilize the vast amounts of methane clathrates that are now melting in the seabed. Millions and millions of gigatons of methane hydrates lie waiting for warmer water, constituting a ticking time bomb, waiting to go off, again, if our alliance does nothing. It is my firm belief as your best candidate for the position as Secretary General for the NATO Alliance, that these giant efforts will further unite and focus the peoples of the world, in a joint effort to save ourselves and our precious planet. We are the great. We are the soldiers of the human race.